Rabotai. Good morning to everybody. Uh, we're dedicating the Shibur. Le'elun Shema Deborah Fe Bat Shemuel. Deborah Bat Shemuel, Esther Tzka Bat Abraham, Lea Bat Monica, Lea Bat Yosef, and Monica Bat Fani. Aleyhem Shalom. As you know, Rabbi Galamiri is uh, out of town only f- until uh, Thursday, so I'm going to try at least uh, to give a few words of Torah, Bezad Hashem. Thank you. There is an interesting Gemara, and it's not only the Gemara. Avod the Rabbi Natan brings up also this story. Famous story, I believe. But I would like to learn the inside of the story together with you. So first of all, the story. There was a rabbi, his name was Rabbi Binyamin at Sadiq. And the Gemara tells us, Rabbi Binyamin at Sadiq was in charge of the kupa of the Dakar of that city. He was the one that all the money of the nations was getting to his hands. He had special accounts, let's call it that in this way, and he was helping out all the people. Says the Gemara that happened to one, one of the years. Situation in, this, in that country, in that city was very bad. Well, there was hunger as well. And uh, one of the days, there is a lady, Almana, widow, comes to the house of the rabbi, knocks at the door, and she begs to the rabbi, Rabbi Parnaseni, Rabbi, give me Parnasa. Says the Gemara, the rabbi answer back to the lady, Ha'avoda. Ha'avoda is like, I swear, I promise. I promise that there is no money in the account at all. I have not even one dollar to give you. Nothing. Unfortunately, this year there were so many people, needed people. I had already to spend all the money. There is nothing now. Says the Gemara that the lady looks at the eyes of the rabbi and she begs him, Rabbi, you don't understand. I have four children. Four children. There is something saying she has seven. I have children. And if Barminan are going to die, the kids also, you know, what's going to be with them? Says the Gemara, you know, the heart of a Jew is the heart of a Jew. Rahmanim, Baishanim, Gumne Hasadim. The rabbi looks at the lady, she tells her, Give me a few minutes. He goes inside and he takes from his own pocket. You now, Rabotai, Abibin Amin, wasn't a guy that uh, also very limited. Whatever he was gaining was exactly to, to maintain his family. He decided to maintain the family of this widow, the widow, and he took on himself all the expenses of the family. Ends up the Gemara saying the following statement. After a few months, Rabbi Bin Amin Tzadi gets sick, and the sickness gets even worse and worse, and he's in the bed, and the doctors, they have no, nothing what to do. And they call up the family to say, say goodbye. Said the Gemara, at that particular moment, in Shamaim, Machia Sharet goes to Akadosh Baruch Hu and they say, Bore Olam, you say in your Torah, Kol HaKayem Nefesh Echad Mi Yisrael, Kilu Kiem Olam Malay. Whoever... Save a life of one person. It's like he saved a whole entire world. You're telling me, say the Malachi Asharei to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, this statement, and what about this rabbi? This rabbi saved a life of not only a lady, of all her children. And right now he's going to die? Says the Gemara Miyad, on the spot, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Cancel the decree and he gave to Binamina Tzadik extra 22 years. The Mefashim, if you look in the Mefashim, they say, Why 22 years? 22, why not, uh, I don't know, 23, 25, 120. You know, we like, uh, 
Why, 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 why 22? Many explanations. One of them is because we just said that you save one life, it's like you save the whole entire world. All Am Yisrael. Say, Chachamim, how many letters do you have in the Torah? 22 letters of the alphabet. Keneged, every single neshama of every single Yehudi represents the letter in the Torah. You save up one life, you think you save one letter. You save the whole entire Am Yisrael. You're getting keneged that all the 22 years. Beautiful. Rabotai, that's the regular, regular story that the Gemara writes. But the question is, I don't understand. Binyamin Tzadik did a great chesed, right? Mitzvah. He saved up somebody. Why Bore Olam, at the first time, putting me in such a situation of being about to die? For what? To save him. What's the whole point? Don't put him in situations. Don't save him. Say, Yalla, I'm giving you extra 22 years without suffering. Bayesh. What are you going to tell me if now you, we have no story? Don't worry, the Gemara, you know, he can make it a story also about that. But Olam gave me extra 22 years even though he didn't deserve it. There is an unbelievable message. Unbelievable message. The message is, it's a little bit tough. When a person does a great mitzvah, we always finish out the mitzvah. Listen, Habibi, you were amazing today. What a mitzvah! Yeah, you saved the day! You went and you helped this person, you went and did this, you wake up nets, you learn in Dafyomi, and then you go with the Havruta, and then you did Tzedakah. And was, the whole day was amazing. You feel great. Say, Kadosh Baruch Hu, I want to check one, one thing. If the reason why you do mitzvot is because you want to feel good or is because you really want to do the mitzvah. And automatically, the challenge that HaKadosh Baruch Hu puts to a person is to see how much the person is going to hold strongly the mitzvah that he did. How many times it happened? And I remember before I came here, I used to live in Panama. And I was with a lot of teenagers, 8, 16, 17, 18. Not once and not twice. I had kids coming up to me and saying, Rabbi, I started to keep up Shabbat. And instead of seeing success, yalla, one Eid, another Makkah, another Makkah. When I do mitzvot, I get makot. When I do Averot, everything is going smooth. Why is that? There's many reasons, but one of the main reasons is to see when you do a mitzvah, if you're doing it out of love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, or out of love of how much good you're going to feel about yourself. Mitzvot lav le'enot mitnu. The mitzvot is really to do whatever HaKadosh Baruch Hu is asking from us. So you're going to get a challenge. And according to the challenge... You're going to get the payment. I said yesterday to the first group, and I'm going to say very quick because I already said the story. I was saying over that there, there is a rabbi. He told me of the story. He said they went to China. And in China, he got it to a city. I forget the name of the city. They have 55 million people living in that city. Wow. <laughs> Only? <laughs> Only. <laughs> 55 million people in that city. You can imagine, huge, huge place, a lot of people back and forth. Says the rabbi, and it's a city of business. And all the time there is people going back and forth, back and forth. I forget the name, it's a strange name. Anyway, the rabbi said, I got to that place, and uh, I met all type of people. There is only Chabad over there. I met, I saw a lot of people. 
Shabbat, there is a guy that approached me and he tells me, Rabbi, I know you from uh, TV, whatever it is in Israel. Rabbi, I want to tell you something. You have to hear my story. He said, what's your story? I used to have four stores of sushi in, in, uh, in this city. China goes together. Four stores of sushi, restaurants. Baruch Hashem, my business was going great. But unfortunately, seven years he was married, no children. He was looking for children. He went to the rabbi of Chabad, and the rabbi Chabad told him, listen, Habibi, you must do a mitzvah, mesirut nefesh. Which mitzvah? He says, you know what? Go to the airport. You know how many Israelis are coming? Go put on tefillin. Every day, go to the airport, put on tefillin. The guy said, Chabad, it was together. The guy said, yalla, I go, I go, I go for it. He went, and he was going every single day to the airport, waiting for El Al flight, yalla, putting on the filin. He became friends with the guys of El Al. Everything was great. He says that after a few months, Baruch Hashem, his wife is getting pregnant, and he gets twins. Mashallah. He says he was so happy. And things were, you know, shining in his life. He have kids. He have good money. He have good wife. He have good friends. He's doing mitzvot. Ah! He's in the glory. Started, he said, this is my good mazal. I, you know, I feel that that's the right moment to do something big. In my business. He said, I'm going to ask for some loans or whatever it is. And instead of having stores and restaurants of sushi, I'm going to make a f sushi factory. I can, uh, you know, going for big. The guy asked from one bank, from another bank, he got the amount of money. He invested all the money. He started to build up the factory. And up, the whole thing went down. All the business went down. Bank crash. He gets without a penny in his pocket. Mamash. Says, Rabbi, I was destroyed. You know those moments that you see only darkness in your, in, in front of you. There is no, not, not even a heishek. How do you say heishek in English? Not even a desire to to wake up in the morning. He said I was feeling that way, and I had my yitzchak coming up to me in the morning, and he says, Shimon, don't go to the airport today. <laughs> you know, I don't understand you. Yeah, you're tired, you're suffering, you're whatever, you don't go. So I had this yetzer I said to myself, I don't care. I'm going right now, no desire, I take out the car and I go to the, he went, he put into the, into the feeling to the people. One of the guys in Elal was his friend, he heard the story, came up to the guy and he told him, listen, I have an idea for you. Anyway, you have no job, right? You need money. Why not? You're going back and forth anyway to the airport. Be a taxi driver. Me, taxi driver? Yeah, who cares? At least something. The guy heard him. And he started to be a taxi driver. A few weeks later, he, had, he started to have too many people asking for him. He got a contact. He hired all their drivers. Rabotai today, he's in charge, he's the travel agency of all the Jews that are coming from all over the world to this city for the business. He takes care of all the travel, he takes care of hotels, he takes care of everything. Luggages, whatever you can imagine, the guy is. So can you understand that? But the Olam after Mitzvah says, that's amazing. Now let me, let me check you. Let me put you a little bit of a challenge. To see how strong you're going to keep the mitzvah. And guess what? Here comes the second, the second uh, 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 point of the story of Rabbi Bin Amin. What happened after? That if you were able not to complain about the mitzvah that he did and to continue doing it, guess what? The same mitzvah itself is going to give you the salvation. From the same mitzvah that you're doing, you're going to get, you're going to get your hatzlacha. Let me tell you, Rabbi, we have no idea how Boreola managed the world. 
I just heard an amazing, crazy story, by the way, that happened in, in New York. I don't know exactly how long ago it happened. Hasid guy. Just to understand how much we have no clue about how Boreola managed the world. A Hasid guy was driving in Bora Park in his car. It's the type of guy, you know, very responsible, never goes, you know, over the speed limit. You know, everything, he's very careful. He's driving, and then he was driving in the regular speed, and there is a lady jumping up to the street, to the, to the, to the street. He sees her, automatically press the Break. brakes. He pressed the brakes, and he finds his car flipping, going, flipping, it's called? Spinning. 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 He spins, and in those seconds, he sees how his car, whatever he sees, he's, he's crashing two old people that were in the sidewalk. And Kaddish the police comes, ambulances are coming, disaster. You I mean, cannot even imagine. I mean, he just, you know, he pressed the brake. What I want. Rabotai, obviously, he was also injured after he went out from the, from the hospital. They told him that he killed up this couple and now he has to go to court he goes to the court he hears the whole entire thing you know how they accuse him and they ask him what do you have to say for your uh, and he says listen uh, you can check out in, in my police uh, you know record I never got a, a, a ticket in my life never I'm very careful I don't know even what happened there I don't know what happened to the car. And he starts to cry. He killed a couple. Butai, there is those guys that are checking up the police inside the police department. The guys that are checking up what happened in the in the place. What was the, uh, the problem? It was oil in the in the on the street. On the street. And that's why he killed up the. Automatically, they say that to the court, the court is what? Then I'm uh, free. This miss, this miss, this miss, but the guy couldn't come back to his life. He was destroyed. Destroyed. They spoke with him. He was this type of guy, happy. His wife tried to tell him nothing, nothing, nothing. One of his friends told him, listen, Already two months passed from that, uh, from that uh, accident. Let's do something. I'm traveling now to Israel. Whatever Baba you tell me, I go. You know, and I ask him, you know, maybe you have to do a tikkun. I, I don't know what. But uh, give me a favor. Whatever the rabbi that we're going to decide says, you do it. Halas. Says, I accept it. Which rabbi? Of Chaim Kedinevsky. They send the letter, the guy writes the whole letter to the rabbi. Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky in Israel. Now the rabbi, whoever knows of Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky, is very limited in, in his words. Very limited. Even when he writes back a letter, uh, one word, two words. Halas. Rabotai, they send the letter until they get the answer. Finally, he gets the answer. He opens up the letter, and he sees one word. You get amazed. Amalek. Amalek. So Amalek. No, maybe the Yitzherara that is coming. You know, to, that I should not be sad because it's the Yitzherara. Anyway, the friend told him, "Yeah, it's the, that's the meaning. You know that Amalek is trying to put you down." Forget about it. Don't be sad. That's and the guy said, Yalla, I accept it. And he started to come back to himself. A few months later, his wife comes up to him. 
few weeks later, whatever, his wife comes up to him. He tells him, listen, uh, Khalidi, you know, before the accident happened, we were planning to move. Already the house is too little, whatever. I didn't, spoil, I didn't say a word because of your situation, but now I see you, you know, that you're good, Baruch Hashem, you're coming back to normal. You want to, uh, you know, to check out houses? He says, why not? He called one broker to another broker. One of the days he gets a phone call. I had an, uh, an, uh, a house for you. They get into the house, and they see the house, beautiful house, and they go to the living room, and then they see a picture, and in that picture they see the couple. The couple was at the house. The guy fainted. Fainted. They wake him up. What happened? Why? Take him out. Take me out. Out of here. They're taking out the guy, and they pass through one of the rooms, and they said the guy just passing, and they see there was a piano, and in front of the piano there was a picture, and in that picture there was a Nazi soldier. They look at the picture, and they tell my wife, what a second. He goes with the picture to the living room, he's the same guy. And get it, get it, that's what is the worst. This guy, the military research, he was in one of the concentration camps when his grandfather of this Jew got killed. Wow. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what is a closer who making all puzzle and not forgetting about any action? This is for bad, but there is also for good. Whatever a person does, don't think for a minute that your action went to the, you know, there's no such a thing. <laughs> Whatever a person does, Akadosh Baruch Hu keeps it. And at the right moment, you're going to see the fruits. And if it's not going to be by you, it's going to be by your kids. And if it's not going to be by your kids, by your grandkids, they're going to get the same action that he did. For bad, but for good. Also for you, better